Morning, Benny. Morning, Kyle. How you living, bud? Living good. Me too. It's beautiful so, so out. Sorry. I'm just busy. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? We are here. It's another day. We're here to get some three-quarter inch crushed stone right there. Two more buckets like that one and we're good to go. You ready for the day, Ben? Ready. This is three yards right here and we have a delivery of eight yards coming. It should give us a really good start on backfilling. that thing stands straight up <laughs> <laughs> that thing's got to be at least what 18 20 feet in the air right yeah. at least dude well. that's like that could be 22 feet in the air something like that I have to stand right here to get it all in one frame with a GoPro here we are so this is what we did yesterday. Did not have the camera with me yesterday. Building a set of steps right there. First step, Benny, backfill, right? Backfill. Well, if you guys seen the videos before, you know how we backfill. But if not, we're gonna show you the process and how we go about it. Three quarter inch crushed stone that you saw us dumping that pile in the front. I'm gonna lay a thin layer of it compact it into the subsoil with our plate compactor and especially with um, excavations like this that have a lot of stone if you look closely into some areas there's going to be spots like this that have um, holes and what you're doing here by filling in a thin layer of that three quarter inch stone is that stone is going to fill in all these gaps like these ones all these low spots this one this one's pretty low, so three quarter will fill in there and then compact it all in. And all those little weak sp uh, spots that may sink in the future are going to get filled in with that stone. And then we go over that layer with uh, geotextile fabric and then backfill just straight on top of that, however much stone you need. Let's go. We got everything raked out, got all our little stones and rocks and everything out of the way. I tracked in the 90% uh, of the area, just compression compacted the subsoil with the machine. Ben's going around getting the edges that I couldn't get with the machine. So he'll go along the whole edge around all this and so on and so forth. But that's all we do for our subsoil. We don't plate compact the subsoil because we don't want it to be a smooth, um, closed up surface. What we're going to do next with our three quarter is going to make the subsoil even more permeable than it is it's called correcting the soil and when you put the three quarter inch crushed stone all the pointed edges go into the soil and when you compact it in they go in and they turn and they twist and they open up the soil to accept water hey bud do you got a shake weight at home <laughs> <laughs> two handed two two handed shake weight dude. There you go. Okay, so why do I use open grade base or open graded base? This is a question I seem to get on the regular and I wanted to make this video and go in a little bit more detail on why I choose this method over the more traditional method of a gravel base or dense grade base, class five. It's uh, described in many different ways. But the difference between the two different materials is that a dense grade or a class 5 has these 3 quarter inch crushed stone pieces in it but it also is filled with sand particles, stone dust particles and smaller crushed stone pieces or binder materials is what people in the industry describe it as. This is the material that you see construction workers using under our roads for the road base, uh, for driveway base material 
Um, this is the material that they use and they compact it very heavily to create a hard surface to where it won't sink or shift. While that seems like it's exactly what you want underneath your concrete pavers, it is also misleading depending on the region of the country you're in. Here in Massachusetts we go through multiple freeze-thaw cycles which causes the ground to shift multiple times throughout the season. So the main goal in these parts is to let the water that may be collecting underneath your pavers drain into the subsoil as quick as possible, not hold on to it or resist water from flowing into it. So with using this material for backfilling your concrete pavers, it holds on to no water. You have nothing but crushed stone, crushed aggregate with no fines in it, allowing water to drain through it freely. There's our thin layer spread out. There's the dirt. About an inch and a half here. The stone. And it's always hard to tell on camera, but our subsoil as well as our patio and every structure we make is going to have a slight pitch. So the subsoil is pitched away from the house towards that compactor. We pretty much always pitch our subsoils and our, our pavers two ways, out and away. So now that this area's got this layer of stone on it, we're going to compact it twice with the plate compactor going different directions. Okay, so if you remember me saying earlier, we don't plate compact the subsoil simply because if you compact the soil nice and tight, it makes it hard for it to actually accept water. So we want to spread the stone out and compact the stone into the soil so that the soil will accept water easier. It's called correcting the base or correcting the subsoil. And that's what we're doing here. This one inch, one and a half inch of stone being compacted is going to open the subsoil up and allow it for better water drainage and permeation. There it is, all compacted. You see, like in areas like that, it really pushes it down into the subsoil and mixes it in nice. It gives us a really firm base to put our fabric on top of and backfill. And uh, like I said, the uh, downfall to not doing this and putting fabric right over your subsoil is those little sinkholes that I showed you that, that are already formed and that will form are actually getting prevented from being filled because of the fabric. You need to put the three quarter down, rake it out, compact it, then fabric. That's how you got to do these systems or else you will still have sinkholes underneath the fabric. So I do this on every single job, every patio, walkway, wall. We put, we put this thin layer down and compact, then fabric. Benny is over here opening up our fabric, our geotextile fabric. Hey, let me get a picture of that uh, picture first. Picture of that picture, Ben. See what we're working with here. This particular manufacturer is called SRW Products, and they uh, it's a six by hundred roll, so six hundred square feet. We're gonna lay out from where the stone stops right there. Out, we're gonna start at a low point, and then we're gonna just kind of lay a roll out each each section one at a time, going up towards the house. So it's like a plastic. It's not a cloth and that's what you want for the base of any kind of paver or hardscape installation now if you just cannot find that kind of material a landscape a woven cloth is better than nothing but make sure you try to get a geotextile woven plastic uh, fabric not cloth so landscape products and masonry products are usually pretty different depending on what parts you are in the country or in the world so don't worry too much about the manufacturer. I get comments a lot about like, you know, what what manufacturer should I use or what material should I use? Just find something pretty comparable. This is a uh, woven plastic as you saw, it's strands of plastic woven together in a 6 foot by 100 foot roll, and it's going to give the base stabilization as well as separation. We're not going to get soil to migrate into this clean stone that we're adding and creating the base out of. It's going to stay clean for the remainder of its life and it's going to stay stable. The plastic woven fabric 
helps prevent sinkholes and shifting of the pavers and it's a very important part of the process and a very cheap insurance policy. We use it on every hardscape pro project and install that we do. So again our main goal with this base method is to allow for water to drain down into our subsoils as as quickly and as freely as possible. The, the number one cause for failure in my opinion on paver base is that the paver base acts as a sponge and it holds on to water and through the freeze thaw cycles in the winter that water expands and contracts so many times that it causes the pavers to shift and all these steps of this method that we're doing are to prevent that. We're pretty much creating an extremely big dry well underneath our pavers to allow any water that may get underneath our pavers to get down to our subsoil and permeate down through our subsoils as quickly as possible. So that's it right there. Now that the fabric's over our bottom layer of three quarter that's compacted into our subsoil, we have a really nice flat, even surface. And um, another thing about this geotextile fabric is it's water wicking. It's permeable, so water will go through it, but it's also water wicking. So that's why we have our uh, sub base sloped and slanted the same way our patio is going to be. So if there's any water underneath, it's going to get pushed away from the house. And uh, the fabric's going to help stabilize the rock, and it's also going to prevent the subsoils from mixing in with our clean aggregate. So this this fabric is a is a must in my book. If you don't do it, it's kind of kind of silly. All right, we have 11 cubic yards of three quarter inch crushed stone spread. It looks good, Benny. So my camera actually ran out of battery, and um, I wasn't able to film a lot of the back filling of us just dumping the stone out but this right here is another video of us back filling a patio it's part of a playlist just like this video is and uh, it goes into a little bit more detail as well on back filling the same method that we use in this patio but one thing i did want to mention is the compaction of open grade base or the compaction of crushed angular stone with no fines in it this type of material doesn't require compaction in as small of lifts as a dense grade or a class 5 material. You would be compacting dense grade or a crushed gravel in increments of 2 to 3 inches. And when it comes to open grade stone, uh, 6 inch increments is sufficient, especially when dealing with a foot traffic only area. If you get into like a 12 inch situation you can compact it in two lifts of six inches but it does not require the compaction that dense grade or class 5 does. And again that is not the goal of putting in an open grade base uh, for your pavers. The goal is to allow water to permeate through your base and down into your subsoil and permeate even further into the ground to stay away from the base of your pavers. So what the end goal that you're looking for with open grade base is to have open spaces in your base material for water to travel through but also for it to expand into when it freezes. If there's any water that is sitting in your base material under your pavers you want it to have open areas in the base material for it to expand into. To me that's the main reason why I use open grade base and the main reason why I explain I use open grade base. Uh, compared to the class 5 or dense grade which is still classified a permeable material water will travel through it but at an extremely slower rate than it will travel through an open clean crushed aggregate. Okay so another comment I get here and there is when I put the plastic down and backfill with the three quarter inch stone, people seem to feel like you're creating an area where water actually can't escape. Uh, I get comments on, on the fact that when you dig a hole and you fill it with an open grade base like this, it just creates a swimming pool. And um, I just want to explain a little bit more. I don't think people actually <laughs> understand that water permeates down through soil. Anywhere that's raining or 
surface water hits, it permeates down through your grass, through the grass roots, through your topsoil, and down into your subsoil. That's how water travels. Unless it's been evaporated or roots or plants suck up the water, the moisture travels down through soils. So when you have an area that has thick topsoil, water never actually travels through it because it's actually holding on to the water like a sponge. Sponge. So when you remove the soil and get down to a nice gravel type soil, it will accept water. It will help absorb water and make it permeate down through into the earth. And this, this system, this open grade base system, helps the water get there quicker. So then what about clay soil types? Uh, even with a clay soil type, water will still permeate through but at a much slower rate. So again, when doing uh, open grade base with a clay subsoil, what we end up doing is we dig it deeper. And digging it deeper just pretty much gives you more volume, more space in your base for water to collect and help permeate down into your subsoil. If you go into a situation where a customer has a lot of clay and you remove the clay and you put stone in, the customer will never be worse off than they were before you came because all you're doing is giving them a huge dry well area for water to slowly permeate down. And like I said, with clay we end up digging a little bit deeper and uh, a little bit more compacting to make sure it's steady. This job that you're watching on on this video and the one that's um, playing now is a really good gravel and stone like uh, subsoil so there will never be any water issues here. But anyway I know that's a lot of talking. Uh, I'm talking a lot right now in this video because like I said I get a lot of common questions on on the backfill method that I use and I'm trying to go over it in as much detail as possible during this video so I hope I'm answering the questions if not make sure you hit me up in the comment section leave the question I will get get around to it as soon as possible so there's links in the description below um, on these jobs of these clips that you've been seeing but for now let's get back to that other job we're gonna uh, keep can continue digging over here since this area is pretty much all backfilled the pile of stone that we uh, had here we ordered eight yards and we brought three this morning so that was 11 total and that did this area we'll probably have to sprinkle some in here and there to make make sure our grades perfect but that's pretty that's pretty close right yeah, that's there pretty close. that's pretty close how do I look right here bud do I look does the aviators kind of make the GoPro not look as goofy or does it look even more goofy it kind of looks even more goofy <laughs> it kind of looks more goofy yeah, it looks like one solid face setup yeah I mean, you know the funny, there's like no other way though. Like, I don't like the chest cam, because the chest cam like, makes it look like everyone's taller, and it also like, when you bend over, dude, it looks like yeah, directly at the ground, you know? He bought us lunch, man, that's really nice of him. Good customers. I remember this one lady, dude, that I worked for way back at Twin Pines every morning you know that extremely expensive pomegranate juice palm mm. comes in like a snowman bottle almost stuff's like 10 bucks for a half gallon every morning dude i got that to the job site she had one out dude cup full of ice and pomegranate juice and oh my gosh bro forget red bull dude forget it but red bull cost has nothing on pomegranate juice dude pomegranate juice is way more expensive but it's bomb, dude. On ice, whoa. whoa. <laughs> dude, that is some of the strongest grass I've ever seen in my life. Look at that machine right now, yeah. dude. And it still wouldn't go under it. Hey, 
it is. Excavated out. A lot of rocks. A lot of big rocks. All set to that corner. Now we can do the same thing we over did over here. Thin layer of stone, compacted, fabric, backfill. Another good day. That was the third day we were here, but the first day was about a half day. And uh, I think we're looking really good. We're excavated. It's probably 70% backfilled. A lot of material on the job. We're looking good. Tomorrow we're gonna finish uh, backfilling. We're gonna finish removing the, con the old concrete walkway, excavating, backfilling, doing all that. And then hopefully getting started on the stone veneer. But until that video, until tomorrow, we will see you guys then. Hit that like and subscribe. Peace.